It's time, time for GMA, GMA Life. Life. AI and your taxes. With some major companies offering artificial intelligence tools to help you prepare your filing this year. What you should know. Before you take the leap, the hard must-have-money conversations before marriage, having kids, or buying a house. And the questions to ask, even on the first date. And modern-day meet cute. We're talking to the author behind our GMA Book Club pick for April. Hello and welcome to GMA Life. I'm Lori Bergamato. And I'm Ashin Singh. And right now we're backstage in the GMA Green Room. And coming up on GMA Life, Tori Johnson has deals and steals for anyone ready to start their spring gardening. I need to start mine. And I'm telling you which towels have the right stuff. Plus, Ginger Z is teaching us all how to make our very own Eclipse Viewfinder. I'm gonna need that, but first, tax day is approaching fast. Laura, you do your taxes? Almost. And this year, <laughs> some companies are using AI as a tool to help you prepare your return. Our chief economics correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis, has all the details. Artificial intelligence can help with a lot of things, but can it help you do your taxes? Here's what happened when one Washington Post reporter put it to the test. Tax season is here, and this year, H&R Block and TurboTax are rolling out new AI chatbots to assist users preparing their own returns. Doing my own taxes online. Their new AI tax assist is so awesome, it answers my questions if I ever need help. The Washington Post tech reporter Jeffrey Fowler tried them out and devised a set of 16 hypothetical tax questions to ask the Q&A function of the program, like this one. Where should your child file taxes if she goes to college out of state? Then he says he enlisted the help of tax professionals from EP Wealth Advisors to check the results. TurboTax's AI responded with advice about tax credits and extensions. That was completely unrelated and not helpful. And H&R Block's AI implied she had to file taxes in both states. If a child is a student in another state, but doesn't work and have earned income in that state, there's probably uh, no filing requirement. Most of the time, the TurboTax answers were just irrelevant, but sometimes they were slightly on point. The answers from H&R Block's AI were more on point, but occasionally were confidently wrong about things. H&R Block told us our experts at the Tax Institute tested the responses the Post deemed inaccurate, finding that alternate phrasing and use during the guided interview led to more accurate responses. Intuit, the owner of TurboTax, told us AI is not completing or filing a tax return in TurboTax. If a TurboTax filer ever has a question about their tax return, they are only a click away from a live tax expert at all times. Both companies say the potential harm to taxpayers is limited because the AI is not actually doing your taxes. Now, some things to also keep in mind. There aren't really that many guardrails right now as far as AI is concerned. The same thing applies here as it does with any tax preparation. You want to make sure you have all your documents, you're accurate, so you can save yourself that time and hassle later. And they said you can click and get an expert right away if you have questions. IRS.gov also has experts. Thank you, Rebecca. Now to our series, Before You Take the Leap, looking at tough topics to conquer before taking the next step in a relationship. That's right. Eva Pilgrim spoke to Bachelor Nation fan favorite Jason Tardick about why it's important to talk about finances before marriage. Take a look. I know money, it's one of those subjects many people don't really want to bring up on a first date, but Bachelor favorite Jason Tardick says, we should all do it. He's opening up about his own mistakes in love, saying finding out about your possible future partner's finances could tell you a lot about if you're compatible. When you fall in love, there's one topic new couples hesitate to bring up, money. I got caught up in what I call the love cloud. Stories can shift, context can change, but numbers don't lie. Bachelor Nation fan favorite Jason Tardick sharing the lessons he's learned from his life and his career in banking when it comes to talking about finances in his new book, Talk Money to Me. Was there a point in your previous relationship where you knew you needed to say something about money? You know, I, I look back at those days, and I lived in Seattle, and I ended up moving to Nashville. And then the first weekend, we 
rescued a dog together. You think about all the moving parts there and someone who has the experience that I do within you know, the personal finance realm and, and still at that level, I wasn't stepping into conversations that needed to happen. Jason outlining the money basics every couple should discuss. You gotta know your individual's credit score. You gotta know annual expenses. You then have to know what they are making per year. I want you to go over every single account and what the value in those accounts are and where they are because we know there are a lot of hidden accounts out there. There's something called debt to income ratio. So I want you to know that. There's a net worth section, understanding one another's net worth and benchmarking it. Then you want to understand what their total risk tolerance is. And then the last one is what age do you want to retire? Money, one of the leading causes for divorce. Jason says it's important to find out early on if you're financially compatible. I think like even if you're going on a first date, so you could ask questions like, you win a million bucks today. You got to spend every dollar. How are you going to spend it? Or something even funny like last six months, what's the most outrageous purchase you made? Because a lot of our consumption has to do with our behaviors, and a lot of behaviors create connection when we openly talk about them. Because that's a hard thing to share. <laughs> yeah. I, what I've learned about this topic with money is the only way to get other people to share is to show your cards first. But if I want to achieve this idea of normalizing money and talking about it, I think you have to lead with an open hand. What are you hoping comes out of this book? I'm hoping that people really just can get comfortable with the idea about not weaponizing money, understanding that every single one of us has some form of financial hardship. You do have to step into the conversations with the people you're marrying. Those are some great tips for people out there. Now to the countdown to the total solar eclipse. I'm Drum psyched. Roll, please. And it's happening on Monday. Yes, our GMA digital team got together with ABC News chief meteorologist Ginger Z for a step-by-step -step guide to making your own solar eclipse viewer. Take a look. Today, we are going to be making an eclipse pinhole projector so that you too can view the eclipse safely. And we're basically going to take the direct rays of the sun, which we know are harmful to our eyes, and we're going to view them through the pinhole. It will be concentrated right there on a piece of paper at the bottom of the box so we can safely look at it. You're going to need just paper, a cereal box, tin foil, some scissors, a pencil, and some tape. So start by just taking your cereal box and going around the outside with a pencil onto your white paper. You're gonna cut out that shape so that that is going to go in the very bottom of your box. So you know the solar eclipse obviously doesn't happen all that often. And even though we had one that crossed the country in 2017, we won't see another one like this for 45 years. Like. Get your cereal boxes ready, this is big. So take that white piece of paper that you just cut out and make sure that it secures to the bottom of your cereal box. The top of your cereal box is usually full. I want you to cut out the two sides so that it's open on each side, okay? And then keep the middle taped. All right, so take the tin foil, cover up one side, and then tape that on. Now, just take anything that's sharp and do a tiny little dot hole right in the top of the tin foil. And what you'll do is when we go out there, you're going to look and allow the sunlight to come into that hole, and then you are going to view through here. So make sure that the sun is pointing right at your pinhole, and then, voila, I see a concentrated little sun in there. And when the total solar eclipse happens, I would see it happening right at the end of my cereal box. Thank you so much for that, Ginger. And remember, our coverage of the eclipse starts on GMA Monday and continues throughout the day until the main event at 2 p.m. I'm so excited That's for That's right, yes, me too. It will be anchored by David Muir and Lindsay Davis right here on ABC, ABC News Live, Nat Geo, Nat Geo Wild, Hulu, and Disney Plus. All of them. And when GMA Life returns, heels and steals.
Welcome back to GMA Life. Spring has sprung. So this week, Tori Johnson joins us with must-have deals and steals for anyone planning to spend some time outdoors this season. To get these products, point your cell phone camera at the QR code at the bottom of your screen. As Miranda Priestley would say, florals for spring, groundbreaking. groundbreaking. But we do have groundbreaking deals to get to today. We do. We're starting with Grandpa's, and we're first going to take a listen to a message from the company, then I'm going to have you do a demo. Uh-oh. Good morning, my name is Kathy and I'm the owner of Grandpa's Gardenware Company from Lake Oswego, Oregon. And spring is here, so if you are ready to pull some weeds, this is the tool for you. It lets you pull dandelions, thistles, crabgrass, and a whole bunch of other things without ever bending over. So it lets you pull everything standing up, saves your back and saves your knees. We are so excited to be able to bring you this exclusive offer today. All right. So it, it, that, it is that simple to save your knees and your back, no kneeling, bending. So you would put that just, you would center it over the weed, yep, push it into the ground, and then just tilt. And do you see how that just then will Closes grab the weed? The, wow. Yep, it'll grab the weed all by itself. It almost makes you want to go into the garden, doesn't it? It sure does. It does, it does. And then uh, when you're out there gardening, you'll wear this apron that has that big kangaroo pocket in the front so that you can fill it with your big bounty from your garden and then bring it back and easily empty it onto the counter or wherever you need to. These are really smart. This was invented in 1913. Oh my god. And gosh. it is still an original favorite more than 100 years later, all slash and half today. These are 15 to 22.50. Can't beat so that. So smart, right? Okay. I love the colors too. The, the colors aprons. are yeah. fabulous, as That's, are the colors yes. here from GNF. All of these gloves, we've got a big variety of garden gloves. So there's jersey, foam coated. Right here, we got a long sleeve option. Ooh. The all purpose gloves, the waterproof. So depending on the type of yard work you're doing and what your needs are, there's gloves for you. These are really inexpensive. They range from five to nine dollars, and that includes singles and sets. There's a lot, some of these are like you get 12 pairs for your money. So you get a lot of uh, get a lot of gloves for your buck on this one. Gotta hand it to you, Tori. Uh, it's another you. good one. Look at you. Um, <laughs> Pendleton. So obviously, if you want to uh, look chic when you're doing your gardening or quite frankly, puddle proof your feet, mm -hmm. these are for you. We've got um, both the garden clogs as well as the ankle boots. And for all of them, they're made with a premium rubber on the outside, a cushioned insole for comfort. And then when you look at the bottom of them, it's a non-slip outsole right wow. there. So it's great for the elements. And then you look really good if you're going to go from the garden out to grocery shopping or errands or lunch, you're going to look fabulous and stylish, all 50% off from Pendleton. Love it. These match the Cowboy Carter aesthetic. I know, so. are, exactly. I was wondering if you've noticed that. Of course. How did we get even through a segment without a Beyonce reference? Here so we go. There, there you Better go. Better late than never. Yes. Um, okay, Pops Birding, we've got a message from the company. At Pops Birding, we take pride in innovative products. And it all started with the original hummingbird swing. And now we have an entire line of hummingbird swings to choose from. Just place some of the swings next to a feeder to create the ideal perching spot for hummingbirds to rest and conserve energy while keeping a close eye on their food source. So this originated with the, the observation that after the hummingbirds would feed, they would want to just relax and take cover in the trees, and yet um, you couldn't see them because you didn't necessarily know where they went off to do that. So if you just put this this uh, swing right near the feeder, it goes onto any branch easily. You then get to enjoy the hummingbirds after they've um, enjoyed their food from the feeder. And we've got food for them as well as, this is one of their best-selling products. Ooh. It's this butterfly and wildflower, uh, a butterfly wildflower seed mix and what's awesome about this is that it attracts pollinators to your garden it is so easy to use as are all of the products and they're really well priced at 50 percent off 250 to 1350. Can't beat that. Can't beat that. Love it. Okay, and then finally, Roto Shovel. So this is a cordless automatic handheld shovel. Uh, you want you want to give it a little whirl there? Are we ready? Yeah, so obviously you're gonna read the instructions and know what it does before Ooh. you, <laughs> there you go. You gotta feel a little powerful there. Yeah. So what's awesome about it is that it will dig a hole three times faster than a garden spade. So it will both dig and clear in one easy motion. It's also equipped with a safety shut off. So if you hit a rock or the roots uh, of a tree, it's going to stop as, as opposed to that, um, 
kick back. Yeah. And we've got two different options. One with, and what's great is it's a it's a rechargeable battery that allows it to be cordless. So there's uh, one battery that will last for two hours, or if you know you're going to be doing a full day and really need more, there's an option with two batteries. So your choice, either one. 57% off plus free shipping. You got it. Free shipping. Thank you, Tori. All right, now let's head over to Lori with the right stuff. Thank you, Tori and Will. Now for the right stuff. And this week we're taking a look at an everyday essential. We could all freshen up our towels. Experts recommend you replace your towels every two to five years. So if you're looking for an upgrade and not sure what to pick, we've got you covered. So we're gonna kick things off with our best overall. This is the Front Gate Resort Collection. It boasts nearly 10 thousand five-star reviews. It gets high praise for having a super soft and warm texture. If you love that luxe hotel towel feeling, this is the one for you. It's available in more than 20 shades. These are made of 100% premium Turkish cotton and they wash really well. Our tester said she's a family of five and uses these in heavy rotation, but despite all the washes, they still feel super plush. These start at $35.20 and they come in, you know, washcloth, hand towel, regular size towel, and a bath sheet. Okay, moving on to our super plush. So when you are shopping for towels, you might see the letters GSM. That stands for grams per square meter. That'll be in the description. And why is that important? Because it measures the weight of the fabric. So for example, a low GSM towel might be light and thin, but towels with a higher GSM, like these from Brooklinen, are thicker and softer and more absorbent. This Brooklinen towel actually boasts an 820 GSM, making it the plushest of the entire bunch on set. Our staff test couldn't believe how luxurious it felt and also how quickly it dried, which when something is this plush is really impressive. Uh, it's a bestseller for good reason and the bundle here starts at around $117. Next up is our best waffle towel. So this is from Parachute and you can see it has sort of a different texture. It's a honeycomb weave, lightweight, minimalist inspired. These are made from 100% Turkish cotton and reviewers loved how absorbent and fast drying these towels are. They're super, super lightweight. And our tester agreed saying he was really impressed by how quickly these towels dried relative to his previous purchases of terry cloth towels. He also noted that they felt very elevated in his bathroom, adding a little extra aesthetic and depth without having to add pattern. So these start at around $148. Next up, we're talking about our best value. So with over 40,000 five-star reviews, you'd really be hard pressed to find a better value than this six set bundle. So you get two uh, washcloths, two hand towels and two towels. These are made of Turkish cotton and that low price really belies that durability. So you can get all of that for under $30. Again, these are on Amazon and they have 40,000 incredible reviews. And then finally, let's talk about a splurge. So this is our splurge worthy towel. It's from Riley Home. It's their spa towel set and it is luxurious. It's an award-winning spa towel. It's made in Portugal with 100% long staple cotton, soft. And the word that kept coming up for this in reviews was sumptuous. These have the unique mix of being really lightweight, but also super absorbent. They have a two ply construction and a special handcrafted binding along the sides here. Uh, and that just gives them a different look. The round, the edges are rounded and you can kind of put it any which way and feel great about it. It also comes with a locker loop, which makes this great for easy and quick drying. Um, and if you don't have a towel bar in your bathroom, this is also excellent. And finally, they're a low linting fabric. So that basically means that when you wash it, the fabric is not going to pill, it's not going to shed. And because of that, I think they really earn their splurge worthy title. These bundles start at around $240. When GMA Life returns, my interview with the author behind the April Book Club pick. Welcome back to GMA Life. It's time for us to reveal the GMA Book Club pick for April. Drum roll, please. Lori, you had a chance to sit down with the author, right? I did indeed, and this book has it all. And I love this author, Abby, as well. The book has romance, big questions, unforgettable characters, and a last page that will leave you with a huge smile. The book is Just for the Summer. It's by Abby Jimenez. Take a look. 
She's the award-winning baker turned best-selling author who's developed the recipe for the ultimate romance novel. My books are very funny, but they also have a lot of depth, so they're gonna make you laugh and they're gonna make you cry. This one is no exception. Now, Abby Jimenez is back with her sixth book, Just for the Summer, a modern-day meet-cute that will have readers craving more. Justin and Emma share a curse. Everyone that they date and then break up with goes on to find the love of their life after. So they meet through this Reddit thread and they decide if they date each other and then break up that their curses will cancel each other's out and they'll both go on to find their soulmates after. And of course, things don't go the way that they intend. So you're known for creating characters that are multifaceted, have lots of layers to them. And in this novel, that's no different. Who was your favorite character to write in Just for the Summer and why? I think Emma was probably my favorite character. She's so complex. She's got this beautiful empathy about her and this really interesting life experience that's made her who she is as a person. But she does carry a lot of trauma and that's one of the underlying themes in this book is trauma and how it affects us in relationships as we get older. When it comes to those heavier themes, Abby says she doesn't take them lightly. I had mental health advisors. I had psychologists that read the book, made sure that I got the aspects of Emma's situation um, correct and that it was depicted with accuracy and sensitivity. The book is also a love letter to Minnesota. Why did you want to set it there? I live in Minnesota. I love Minnesota. It's beautiful here. I write most of my books here in Minnesota. If that's what's authentic to me, it's going to feel like you are visiting that place because it's very easy for me to write about the place that I see every day. When she's not writing or juggling her three cupcake shops, Abby says she's an avid reader who loves a good romance novel. For readers who might not gravitate towards romance as a genre, what's your sales pitch for them? Romance, especially modern romance, is smart. It feels very in the now, and most importantly is it's going to give you a happy ever after at the end. So no matter what I put you through in these pages, you will be smiling on that last page when you close that book. And if you don't read romance, just read this one. This is going to be your gateway book. And then you're going to be reading all the romances, and then you can thank me. <laughs> and Just for the Summer is available now. You can keep reading along with us, and I hope you do, yes. you especially, <laughs> on our Instagram at GMA Book Club. That's all for GMA Life. But before we go, we want to tell you about Pop Culture Moms, a new podcast from Good Morning America and ABC Audio. Each week, best-selling author Andy Mitchell and our very own GMA Life showrunner Sabrina Kohlberg take their obsession with TV and movies to the next level, hoping, looking for parenting <laughs> wisdom from fictional moms that they love the most. And I love this podcast the most. They turn to the toddler experts from Big Little Feelings. Love them. Did you use your big girl book? No. To talk about their favorite cartoon moms and what their parenting styles can teach all of us. Well, <laughs> we all have toddlers in this group, right? So yeah. we spend a lot of time watching the cartoons that our kids watch. So I think it's fun to talk about, are there examples of mothers that we see on these shows that really resonate with you, that you like their parenting style? We watch a lot of Daniel Tiger. Yeah, same. Love yeah. Mom Tiger. Do you think she's a big little feeling style mom? A hundred percent. You can listen to Pop Culture Moms wherever you listen to your podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. See you on next week. See you next week on GMA Live. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.